Before I begin, I would like to start by sharing a bit about myself. My name is Eleanor Roberts. I'm a freshman at Freeman High School, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak with you all today. These past few months have been a notable experience for us all, to say the least. The coronavirus went from a tragedy affecting people thousands of miles away to the reason for a national lockdown in just a few short weeks. It is the reason why thousands of high school, college, and seniors across the country have been deprived of many momentous occasions that come with finishing school. It is the cause of wrenching disappointment as summer camps and trips have been canceled. It is seemingly the current source of most of our problems, and I could go on for hours naming the various ways in which it has affected all of our lives. But instead of that, I would like to take a moment to talk about relationships. The Webster Dictionary defines a relationship as the state of being related or interrelated, the relation connecting or binding participants in a relationship, or a state of affairs existing between those having relations or dealings. These complicated definitions confused me. I thought a relationship was as simple as two people with some sort of connection. I always thought the term relationship was far too broad to ever be put to good use. What kind of relationship? A friendship? A business partner? A husband or wife? After reading plenty of confusingly worded definitions, I'm not totally sure I have any idea what a relationship even looks like. I could say I have a relationship with my dog, Rosie, who doesn't understand a word I'm saying. Or I could say I have a relationship with my closest friends who know me better than I know myself. I believe that a relationship is a sophisticated word and it almost sounds like it should come with some sort of contract. But I feel that the only truly contracted relationship we have all entered into is our relationship with God. Psalm 23 states, the Lord is my shepherd, he restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God has extended a sacred contract to us within this psalm. He offers to be our shepherd and to correct us when we stray from the righteous path. He offers to restore our souls and to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. He offers his rod and staff to comfort us. I'm no legal expert, but this sounds like a very good contract to me. To live a life free from fear and pain with God beside us. All we have to do is enter into a life of faith and the sacred contract is signed. So why does it sometimes seem like God is not doing his part? I don't see many rods or staffs around me. I most definitely do have my fears and doubts, especially in these past few weeks, and no loud voice from the sky has warned me of my mistakes and told me how to correct them. Sometimes it can seem as though God has broken the sacred contract and we feel like we are alone in each of our own dark valleys. However, God has not abandoned any of us, especially now. We must learn how to not only open our eyes, but also our hearts in order to recognize how God comforts us as he did the psalmist with his rod and staff. God is bringing us moments of comfort and keeping us close to him in many ways. I think I can speak for most of us when I say these past few weeks have been hard ones. Turning on the TV every day just to get our daily dose of depressing news. A new high reached in deaths per day. A nursing home struck violently by the virus. And the steady climb of cases despite our best efforts to control things. The coronavirus seems like all anyone wants to talk about. Who's got it in the neighborhood? How many new cases in the local ICU? Where does it end? This virus seems like the deepest, darkest valley many of us have faced yet, and still God remains with us. A few days ago, I sat in my room for what felt like the millionth night of quarantine, watching a Netflix show and wishing I could be coming home from a long day of school and sports practice to complain about hours of homework and studying. As I sat, I began to feel the despair and fear creeping in that I had worked so hard to put out of mind. Just as I was preparing myself to endure the wrath of a complete emotional meltdown, I got a text from one of my close friends. She had rediscovered a hilarious video of us dancing and lip singing to a Christmas song. Just as quickly as the despair and hope hopelessness had crept in, they were gone. My friend was like the sunshine breaking through the dark storm clouds that were threatening to wash away any ounce of remaining positivity I had. It was only one text but it made a world of difference to me. 
to open your heart to God will allow you to see the ways in which he works in your life. His rod or staff could be a smile from a stranger passing you on the street. His presence in the valley could be a text or a call from a friend checking up on you. And his guidance to stay on the path of faith could come from one of our weekly virtual services. While we may never shake God's hand or hear a voice from heaven, opening our hearts will allow us to see God's hand in our relationships. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, reminds us that there is a time for everything, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time for war and a time for peace. Now is the time to not only open our eyes, but also our hearts. He is not punishing us with this virus, but is calling us to strengthen our bonds with each other and with God. Let each of us find a way to be God's hand in someone's life and to be the sunshine that clears their cloudy skies. Be the person that reminds someone that God has not left us alone. Amen.